Most people come to Prague with some sort of idea of what they want to see. Charles Bridge, astronomical clock, or maybe the insides of a club on rivers of cheap alcohol. But whatever it is, there's one thing that can make your Prague experience a million times better or a million times worse. Food. If you have delicious Czech food in your tummy, any most disappointing attraction will seem interesting. But if the food tasted like toilet paper, you're gonna be too hungry to enjoy the city. So in this video, we're gonna tell you about six traditional Czech dishes that you can try when you're visiting Prague. We will also give you some suggestions for restaurants, but any self-respecting Czech restaurant will have these dishes on their menu, so you don't need to follow our specific suggestions. Those restaurants are also gonna be the places where we genuinely go eat, so don't expect anything fancy. I'm not paying more than 300 crowns for a meal, you guys. For our first pair of meals, we're visiting Urdolfina restaurant. We wanted to start with some traditional place first, and this is the place where Czech men and women go to have a beer after their long shift. So to match their badassness, you also have to order a beer when you go there. I once ordered water and they brought me beer instead and kind of laughed at me. So learn from my mistakes. Anyway, now to the actual meal. First one is goulash. You might be thinking, Valerie, but goulash is Hungarian. Well, Hungarian goulash is a soup and Czech goulash is some else. Czech goulash is chunks of meat in thick onion-based gravy served with knedliki. Knedliki is a typical Czech side dish, which is basically sliced fluffy bread that you have to soak in the sauce. Goulash is supposed to keep you full for a long time. The flavor is very rich and meaty. Normally it is made of beef, but in some places you can also try deer goulash. Our second meal is gonna be a great suggestion for vegetarians. Hope you are excited because you're not gonna have a lot of options today, I'm afraid. Czech diet is very similar to the diet of a lion. Meat with more meat. But it's a Czech lion, so he also drinks some beer and eats some bread. Our second meal is called bramborak, also known as potato pancake. Sounds like it's not a lot, but trust me, I struggled with finishing it. Bramborak is made from grated potatoes and topped with vegetables and cheese. sounds healthy, but don't worry, we are not going to be suggesting any healthy meals today. Now, you're probably waiting for more restaurant recommendations, but before I give you those, I have to put a huge disclaimer out. If you are coming to Prague and you're looking for a restaurant with delicious food, no negative reviews and cheap prices, you're going to be hungry, I'm afraid. Even though we live here and we know a lot of Czech restaurants, it was kind of hard to pick the ones for this video because it also depends on a lot of factors. Maybe the cook have changed or maybe a waiter had a bad mood that day. So please take all of our suggestions with a pinch of salt. So our first restaurant, Urodolfina, is located in the Old Town. And Old Town is a big historical area which can get quite expensive. Another place that we can recommend in this area is a restaurant called Udvo Kocek. We can also recommend this place, which is called Havelska Koruna, which is a self-service restaurant, so it's more like a buffet. All right, now it's time for our second pair of Czech traditional dishes, and for those, we will have to cross Charles Bridge into the lesser town. We originally wanted to visit a very famous Czech restaurant called Uglaubicu, but it is really busy, so we couldn't even get a table. This is partially because of how the restaurant is so famous, and also because it was Saturday, so everybody had booked in advance. But maybe that was a good thing, because the prices are not the cheapest. We also walked all the way up to the Prague Castle, because right on the Prague Castle district square, there's this famous restaurant called Kuchin, which is quite bougie as well, and it was packed, so we ended up going somewhere else. It is a bit of a climb as you have to go up Neruda Street, but it's absolutely worth it because right in the house where Jan Neruda, a Czech poet, used to live is this restaurant. It's called Udvo Sluncu or At Two Sons and it's a traditional Czech restaurant with a lot of uh, great options for you guys and uh, cheap prices. <laughs> This is one of my most favorite traditional Czech dishes. It is a quarter of a roasted duck served with dumplings and cabbage. We also got fried cheese. And again, this is another great option for vegetarians. And yes, if it's a vegetarian option, it doesn't mean that it's healthy. <laughs> because this is basically a huge chunk of cheese, deep fried, with french fries and mayo, the ultimate Czech cheat meal. Mm -hmm. 
But if you already went all the way to the Prague Castle, you can also try going into Strahov Monastery Brewery because it's not just a brewery, they also have a restaurant there and we already went there in one of our previous videos. Okay, it looks like we already ate whatever we could in the lesser town. Now it's time to visit the new town. And for our last pair of Czech meals, I'm gonna tell you where we are. Finally, we are in a restaurant called Upin Kasu. This is one of the most famous restaurants in the new town. Upin Kasu is the first restaurant that serves Pilsner Urkel beer in Prague. And finally, guys, we are trying the meal of all Czech meals, Svičkova. Any self-respecting traditional Czech restaurant should have this meal on the menu. Svičkova is the name of the sauce. It is made of root vegetables and heavy cream. And then the sauce is poured over the beef cut and served with dumplings. So these are the regular dumplings. And you can also see that uh, they served it with a bit of a jam and the lemon. Sometimes they also add whipped cream that can uh, freak out uh, certain tourists in Prague, but uh, this is how we eat it. And you're supposed to kind of mix it in with the sauce and eat it all together. Uh, okay, let's enjoy it. Okay. Yeah, this is very good. The sauce is very uh, creamy and a little bit sweet. And this should go really well with the beef. Wow, I am, wow, <laughs> I'm so, I'm so elegant. <clears throat> okay, well, this, uh, this beef cut is actually very tender. So it literally <laughs> fell apart <laughs> as I was cutting it, but that's a good thing. Very nice. Okay, and our last meal is dumplings stuffed with smoked meat and served with cabbage and onion. Simple and delicious. Let's try it. It's probably the, the best dumplings with stuffed meat. No, that's probably best dumplings stuffed with meat <laughs> that I've had. Mm -hmm. These are also potato dumplings. So they're not the dumplings that you for example, have here in Svichkova. So they're a bit more mm, mushy and very filling. Okay, I can try also some cabbage. Very nice. And also with the crunchy onions on top, makes it a little bit more different. Newtown is a huge area, so there are a couple of more restaurants we can recommend. Of course, it's Ufleku, one of the oldest pubs in Prague. And also this one. Okay guys, that's it. I'm not gonna lie, I feel very full right now, so it's time to finish this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in our next one. Bye!